Hey, welcome back everybody. This is Adam for uh, How to Be a High Paid Personal Assistant. Today I'm going to talk about hourly or salary. Now, I know you might be looking at it, and I know this is ghetto, and I love that it's ghetto because it's supposed to be low budget, and uh, because you're, if you're watching this again, you should be somebody who's looking to get out of the minimum $15 an hour wage uh, trap. Okay, it is a trap. And the goal of this course is to either have you be rewarded highly for an hourly rate or have you rewarded highly for a salary rate, okay? And to, to, to break that mold, to get out of that, uh, that stigma. So I wrote down some numbers here, $10, $20, $50, and $100. Um, and uh, this is going to create uh, hopefully a cognitive dissonance if you will, like it's going to create a mind tool for you to compare the differences and to understand a little bit more about um, salaries and money and how money is made. So I have something set up here on my computer. It's a little spreadsheet. I'm just going to bring it up here shortly. And um, I'm going to read some information to you about this. So why is hourly a big deal? Why is hourly a big deal? Uh, you see a lot of people... They will base their value to a company or their, their time and their energy being worth something. So most employees, especially right now as we see in America this time of being made, is that McDonald's is getting a lot of pressure to do a $15 an hour minimum wage. Um, minimum wage hasn't kept up with inflation. And man, I, I want to I wanna say the workers are right. And also at the same time, I want to see the businesses and the corporations are right by not wanting to pay that. And I think there's a very easy, very simple solution, which is create value. And a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of business startups, they will focus all their energy on this, like how to be a value, create value. And that's essentially what got me here to create this course, um, which is... How can I focus value on people that are intelligent, educated, um, that are worthwhile, that are, you know, like they want to do something, want to make money. Maybe they just got a, um, a degree and they found out that degree is not very, very hireable. Like you can't get a, a very good job with that type of degree. So they're forced to wait tables and they're forced to do X, Y, Z that's not in their job skills or their job, their field of study for college. So we have people in this country that have a psychology degree that are only making $10 an hour in this country, guaranteed. And it has to do more with liberal arts, educations, um, and, and liberal science uh, degrees. And I mean, it, people who have like business degrees and science degrees uh, and fields of study, they usually don't have that problem. And it's for a reason. It's hard. It's difficult um, for some people. So uh, a lot of people will look at, for example, a person who has a master's in women's studies is not getting hired at Microsoft uh, because Microsoft means a lot of programmers, need a lot of computer savvy engineer types uh, that are savvy in that area. Um, human resources. You know, they only need maybe so many human resource people to hire thousands of people. Uh, because the idea is that once they hire somebody, they're going to be there for 20 years, right? Or they'll be there for a certain amount, amount of years or months, and then they got to go look for somebody else to get to that next level. So this is why, why there's a crisis. There's $10 an hour. So to put it in perspective, I want you to go ahead and think about whoever you are going to be hired by. Like if you're going to be a personal assistant to an entrepreneur, or you're going to be a personal assistant to an executive, I want you to be able to ask this question of yourself and ask this question of your employer of what is your time worth per hour? So when you go work at McDonald's and you're getting paid $10 an hour, you're saying to McDonald's, you have this agreement, whether you like it or not, you're going to have this agreement that says um, one hour of my time is worth $10 an hour. So every hour I spend at McDonald's working, you're going to pay me $10. So what happens to these people that work for Microsoft, they're senior executives and they make like $50,000 a month 
or $100,000 a month, or $1 million a month, what is their hour? What is an hour worth to them then? Because if you're making a million dollars a year, or a million dollars, say a million dollars a month, how much is that going to be computed? So I, I went ahead and I was like, just kind of think about this. This is really interesting. If you made $10 an hour, I would like you to go ahead and think, hey, I made, I'm making $10 an hour. That means, let's just be polite to say one-tenth of that is how much my company makes per hour or whoever I'm being a personal assistant to. Let's say I'm being a personal assistant to somebody. He's like, oh, I make $100 an hour. I am willing to pay 10% of my time to offload all the other garbage uh, or little small miserly tasks that anybody can do. I'm willing to pay somebody $10 an hour to come in and do that. Okay, well then you're, if they make $100 an hour, I would suggest that you start at a $10 rate, at least at first. Um, if they are making $200 an hour, start at $20. If they're making $500 an hour, you would start at $50. And if they were making $1,000 per hour, you would start them off at $100. Um, that's my suggestion for pay rank. Um, of course, those are all negotiable. But the reason why I use these numbers too, 10, 20, 50, and 100, you can paint a better picture with them. So let's say that you have... My next door neighbor's pulling out with this Tesla. So I wish I could like flip it. I have everything set up on my camera, but he just got a Lamborghini. It's amazing. Um, so let's say you work 40 hours a week, uh, you know, normally, right? So if you worked annually 40 hours a week, $10 an hour, 40 hours a week, uh, or 40 hours a week, eight hours a day, you would be making $19,200 a year at ten dollars so that's that, that that's your mcdonald's worker right there net plus gross all together right but if you made twenty dollars an hour twice that it would be thirty eight forty or sorry thirty eight thousand four hundred dollars and the fifty dollars is ninety six thousand dollars then the hundred dollars is one hundred and ninety two thousand dollars a year so just keep this in mind if you're working for an entrepreneur and you're making ten dollars an hour. They're probably they should be making a hundred ninety six thousand dollars a year. But if you are working for somebody who makes a thousand dollars an hour, you would be making just as much as that entrepreneur who makes under two hundred thousand dollars. So why is that important? That is important because you, as a personal assistant, you are saving them forty hours of excessive work that they're doing. If you follow Gary Vaynerchuk, if you follow Grant Cardone, if you follow uh, Tony Robbins and all these guys, you will notice that they are spending a lot of time on smoke. Like, dude, you gotta work 40 hours a week. You gotta work 40 hours a week, try 60, try 80. That's the life of an entrepreneur. Okay, I will say, yes, that is the life of an entrepreneur. But once an entrepreneur starts making money and making sales, they do not want to be making their own lunch because they know the more time they spend on making their lunch, it's the less time they'll have making sales calls, uh, conducting meetings. They don't want to drive to pick up their dry cleaning. They don't want their car washed. They don't want to be doing those things. Okay. They want their car washed. They want their clothes cleaned. They want their food cooked and they want it presented, but it becomes their time becomes more valuable than their money because Money's coming in. It's 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 always being printed and it's always coming in their, their coffers. So you're gonna come in with the value principle of, hey, you make a hundred dollars an hour. How about I make ten dollars an hour? And you'll show them how you help out. Now, I myself personally, if I was making one hundred ninety six thousand dollars a year, and I had somebody come in who was gonna take care of about like <laughs> fifty, maybe even forty percent of all my problems. I would be willing to pay them probably $20 an hour so I wouldn't have to worry about it because then I can up-level myself faster. I can speed up my productivity and my production. So that is the key. That is the key of why we want to do this is we want to be able to get somebody in here that has a college degree. Maybe they're struggling. Maybe they have no college degree, but they can understand productivity. And they'll be making a $40,000 a year, roughly, job right here. And uh, you know what? If you can get a $5 raise after that, that's $25 an hour. 
guess what? You'll be making half of that 50, which is about uh, $45,000 $45, a year at $25 an hour. And I want to tell you, it is doable. It is possible. You can have it. Um, and I'm going to show you how in this video. Or this video series, I should say, actually. So it, it's possible in this video series. And uh, I'll show you with that kind of matrix, you'll be able to say, hey, do you want to pay me salary of $60,000 instead of $100,000? Um, but yeah, so we want to focus on hourly or sale Lori, not salary, salary. How can you sell it? Because getting fifty thousand dollars a year job, when if you did it hourly, it would be sixty to seventy. It's kind of a savings to the employer. It's considerate. Plus, you're getting your needs met uh, for a temporary position. Maybe you'll get promoted and picked to go work somewhere else in their company. But if you utilize this and apply it, you can do it. Send me questions down below. Hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you guys think about this. And I'd love to tell you more in the next video.